All right, welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Kling. I want to do a review of confidence intervals. Uh, I haven't really planned this out, so I may interrupt a few times. Uh, the first thing I want to do is explore the equation for margin of error. We have sort of two equations. We have m equals t star s over square root of n, and that's for continuous data with a, <coughs> or quantitative data, also known as quantitative data, quantitative data, um, and but not in a real super large sample. And then we have m equals z star sigma over square root of n. And that can be either for binary data or a large sample of quantitative data. Um, and if you need a review of binary and quantitative data, that go, you know, can go right back to the first lecture, which, uh, which talked about that. Um, and a very large sample, I don't know, greater than 500, greater than 1,000. Okay, so <coughs> with binary data, sticking with this equation for a second, our sigma, our estimate of sigma is p hat 1 minus p hat. For quantitative with a large sample, quantitative data with a large sample, um, sigma is equal to s. That is the sample standard deviation. We use that in this um, um, in this equation. We substitute s for sigma. Okay, so let's let's stick with the uh, this second version. So I'll, I'll go. So we have one and two, and let's stick with two for a little bit. Um, so we're <coughs> so to get z star using two. Z star is in norm one minus C over two. Okay, where C equals the confidence level. All right, and um, so <coughs> we can say something then, let's say if we we say what happens to M if C, if we change C from 90% to 95%. So that's a an interesting sample problem. We can do that mathematically. Basically we compare the z star that we get from 90% to the z star that we get from 95. And I think what that means, if I remember correctly, is that the z star goes from 1.28, well, maybe I better check that, hang on. No, it looks like it's 1.645 to point. 96 as we go from 90 to 95. So let me get back to that. So they do some erasing. Okay, 
1.645 to 1.96. So graphically, we're going from ninety percent to well, let's take a different color so now we're going to ninety five percent so we know the confidence interval is getting wider but uh, we're interested in how much wider and the, how much wider okay so if we have the margin of error for a 90% confidence interval is going to be 1.645, that's our z star, times sigma over square root of n. Then the margin for a 95% confidence interval is going to be 1.96 sigma over square root of n. And so we could actually calculate how much wider the 95% would be. The ratio of the 95% margin of error to the 90% margin of error will be 1.96 over 1.645. Okay, so that shows how uh, the confidence level affects it. Now, the one problem. Now, if we go back to the first case. Uh, here, where we're using a T star, the problem is that the uh, the sample size now affects the T star. If we have a small sample of continuous data or a not large sample of continuous data or quantitative data, then the T star depends on uh, on the, the sample size, so. Uh, we need an additional piece of information to get an exact quantitative picture of what happens to the margin of error. So we would have to um, pick a margin of error, or pick a, a sample size, let's say n equals, let's say, 101. That would give us degrees of freedom equals 100. And then we could go back to a t-table. Let's see if I still have it sitting there. And at 100, let's say we're still comparing 90 and 95, uh, we, looks like we get 1.66 and 1.98. Um, so we would get T star, or sorry, yeah, T star with the, for a sample size of 101 or degrees of freedom 100, 1. For a 90% confidence interval, is 1.66 T star for a 95% confidence interval. What did I say? 1.84. And so, um, instead of a ratio of 1.96 to 1.645 in a sample of 101, we would have a ratio of 1.84 to 1.66. Um, so that's how the that's sort of using the equation to show what happens to the margin of error as um, as we change the confidence level. But the main thing that we really need to know is this qualitative thing that as we raise our confidence level, we have to widen the margin of error. Okay, so let's continue exploring the equation and look what happens as we change n. And this time we can only say something really precise if we're in um, in the, one of these second modes. That is, we're either using binary data or a very large sample uh, of quantitative data. So we have m equals z star sigma over square root of n. And suppose we um, Suppose we double n. Uh, what will happen to what happens to m? So let's say n is initially a thousand, and then we change it to two thousand. <coughs> then 
Oh, actually, let me um, let me use things where I, I can do this, where I will know square roots. So actually, let me let me quadruple n, quadruple n, and let me do use examples where I will know the square roots. So let's say ten thousand and forty thousand. So the square root of ten thousand is a hundred. And the square root of 40,000 is 200. So we can see that if we leave the confidence level the same, so we have z star the same, and the standard deviation in the population is the same, and all we do is quadruple the um, quadruple. I'm just going to we're asking what happens to m. We quadruple the sample size from 10,000 to 40,000. Then we <coughs> double the square root of the sample size. And so if we double the denominator, the margin of error will be cut in half. So the answer here is if we quadruple the sample size, then we uh, cut margin of error in half. Okay, so uh, we don't get exactly that with the case of a small sample and um, <coughs> and continuous data because the uh, degrees of freedom are affected by the sample size. It isn't just uh, this number in the denominator, we also affect the t-star. But that's actually a pretty minor effect. So the point here is that we can, using this equation particularly, it's, we can predict the effect of the confidence level on the margin of error because the confidence level is what drives z star or t star in the other case and we can predict the effect of the sample size on the margin of error <coughs> okay so we've been doing that and uh, so that's kind of the first thing to review Okay, the second thing I want to review is just simply calculating confidence level, or confidence interval, sorry, calculating a confidence interval. And there, what we, um, a confidence interval looks like um, x bar plus or minus m for quantitative data and it looks like p hat plus or minus m for binary data and then um, and we sometimes we can write it often as some lower value whatever that is and then the higher value so either way of writing it, the plus or minus m way or lower to higher um, is, is okay. The calculator tends to give you the lower to higher. And if you needed to do the margin of error, the margin of error would be half the di distance between the two values. So if the two values were 10 and 20, the distance between the two is 10 or sorry, it's 20, and so that means the margin of error is half that, uh, which is 5. So presumably the x bar in this case is, five, is 15, and so the other way of writing the confidence interval would be 15 plus or minus 5. All right, so, um, so to calculate these things, we can do them by hand. I won't show that. Or we can use for the x's, we can use a t interval um, for the 
the p hat one we can use a one prop z interval so you can do those on the calculator or you can just do it uh, by hand by first calculating a z star or a t star and then um, um, using the formulas that uh, we, I just showed above, the m equals, you know, these formulas up here. Um, okay, so that's um, calculating a confidence interval. Then we have um, solving for n. So a case of the missing n problem. Um, with so I'll just say that with a small sample so if we know that n is going to be less than a thousand let's say but we, we don't know exactly what it's going to be so solving for n means what n will give you a certain margin of error, say 12, with a given confidence level, say 95%. Percent. So that's that's what uh, a solving for n problem would look like. And what I was going to start to say is that with a small sample, um, and quantitative data, you usually need to do guess and check. because the sample size affects the degrees of freedom and therefore T star and then also affects the square root of n. So you have the two, two things going on at once. But there are three cases where you don't need guess and check. And these are the cases that I use on tests just as a hint. I don't I don't typically throw require a guess and check on a on a test of this sort. So three cases that don't need guess and check. One, if you have binary data, and then uh, there's no no degrees of freedom issue with ever with binary data. Two very large sample. I'm starting to write very large sample. Very large sample. Yeah, you know, for example, a thousand or more. And three, a given standard deviation. So we so we somehow know the population standard deviation. Uh, from a normal population. So even if the sample is small, if we some for some reason know the true population standard deviation and we know that we're drawing from so we know that there's a true we know the true population sigma and we know that we're drawing from the normal po from a normal population then we can plug that sigma into an inv norm to get a z star and then once we have a z star we can solve for n without doing guess and check and that's it for the review